Hi, welcome to NEFCO, solution for all kind of neonatal echoes and focus training. Today we will be talking regarding calculations of TRZ estimated right ventricular pressures. As you can see, this is a Pykel 4 chamber view graphics and the pulmonary pressures are depicted by RV pressures and the RV pressures indirectly can be calculated in a Pykel 4 chamber view parasternal long axis and parasternal short axis view and this is this right ventricle pulmonary pressures are estimated by TRZ as you can see this blue arrows is the blood flow going from RV to RA and that red circle which I have drawn is the continuous wave Doppler where we need to keep just above the tricuspid valve to calculate the gradient between RV and RA. The resident, the residual pressure in right atrium is around 6 to 10. So, whatever the pulmonary pressures are there are being projected by TRZ and are the RV pressures to that we add on the right atrial pressures and that gives us the estimated right ventricle pressures. This is the echo apical 4 chamber view you are watching. This is upright apical 4 chamber view and as you can see the probe orientation marker is down there. In this apical 4 chamber we have put a color window. The first thing you need to notice that the apical 4 chamber view <coughs> the contraction of both the ventricles is decreased and in a color jet you can see this blue jet. The blue jet is the tricuspid regurgitant jet that is a blood flow from RV to RA and now I am drawing the position of inter ventricular septum the, the on the right side is right ventricle on the left side is left ventricle and you you can see the interventricular septum is going in lv that means the pressure on the right side at are high and there is a big tr jet that blue color jet that is the flow from rv to ra across the tricuspid valve and in this a pical upright four chamber view if i want to calculate the TRZ, I will put a uh, continuous wave Doppler in the within the blue jet of tricuspid regurge towards the right atrial side that is just above the tricuspid valve and calculate that jet, the pressure gradient between RV and RA by a continuous wave Doppler. And this jet, TR jet is blue because that is the blood flowing from RV to RA and that is away from the probe. And you can also see the mitral regurg there. And now when I put, uh, hit the or press the continuous wave Doppler button, I will get the tracing of that tricuspid regurgitant jet. As you can see that, as it is away from the probe, blue in color, it is below the line. So that tracing, in the tracing we need to calculate the maximum velocity because that velocity the machine converts it in the gradient pressure, pressure gradient by Bernoulli's principle and as you can see the max velocity is around 382 centimeters per second or 3.82 meters per second. So by Bernoulli's principle if the machine has converted into pressure that is 58 millimeters of mercury. So the pressure gradient between RV and RA is 58 millimeters of mercury. To that, we will add 6 to 10. That is a resident, that is a res uh, pressure of the RA, resident pressure of RA. So, it will be around 64 millimeter of mercury will be the right ventricular estimated pressures and that is estimated pressures of in the pulmonary artery. The precondition is that there should not be any cardiac anomaly that is of obstructive nature of, of the right side. If the heart structure should be normal and the RV, right ventricle should be contracting normally. And now for a pical upright four chamber view, where to keep the probe? The probe is to be kept just below the nipple in the pical window and the probe pointer is pointing at 2 to 3 o'clock position that is towards the left shoulder. So there when we keep the probe, let's see how the pical 4 chamber view looks like on the screen. 
so this is your upright apical four chamber view just by eyeballing you can see the contraction is being normal the interventricular ra rv is dilated interventricular septum is flat or slightly in one, some of the phase in one of the phases of cardiac cycle it is slightly been bulge in the lv side so you are seeing ra rv la lv this is tricuspid valve and this is your mitral valve if we put a color window here so when we put a color window i have to check for um, the flow from ra to rv and then a regurg if any regurgitant jet is there so that jet that is the re uh, tricuspid regurgitant jet will be visible so and in this apical four chamber view your heart should be upright and straight so that the all the velocities we measure should be in line with the direction of the ultrasonic waves that is very important so now we would see that there will be a a color window yeah the color window is on so now we can see this red jet of the color is the blood flow from ra to rv and this blue color jet is the tricuspid regurgitant jet that is the blood flowing from rv towards ra so this is to calculate the tr jet gradient we would keep the continuous wave doppler the continuous wave doppler should be kept in this blue regurgitant jet just above the tricuspid valve towards the right atrial side so when we will put that yeah you you concentrate on this yellow dot this is this is the cursor so when we put the cursor there and then after putting it in the correct position we will press the <coughs> continuous wave doppler button in the machine as soon as we press that the machine will start tracing the jet dopplers and by align uh, adequately adjusting the scale we would see that this is below the line because it is blue away from the probe so then we have to calculate the maximum velocity out of these tracings so we hit we press the caliper button and we look for the maximum velocity among all these traces so that you would see that in the machine we press the caliper button just simply we will uh, press the caliper buttons so that we can calculate the the pressure gradient and to that pressure gradient we will add 6 to 10 so this i am pressing the caliper button as we press that we would be able to calculate the maximum velocity the maximum velocity 